Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, gals and gentle pods, and welcome back to the shed. We're not in the shed, we're in the workshop, because Morty's here. Uh, as you can see, I found some more rust. So this is the front valance, front apron, front grill support, and it was up to a quarter of an inch thick with body filler in this corner, all the way along here, pretty much all the way along here. And at the ends, there's a bit of plate being welded on the end there. Uh, doesn't seem to have a patch welded on this end, but it is pretty crusty. The apron is holed. It's like a pair of lacy knickers. Um, so basically, it was held together with isopon. She was the isopon special, but we can fix it. So I'll just show you a bit more of a close-up of what we're up against with this. I will get to the engine rebuild. Um, I've been preparing stuff for it, but that'll be another video altogether. So for the time being, this is the job in hand, getting this repaired. So I'll just give you a closer view of what we're up against at this end. So there we have it. It's uh, pretty grotty, as I say, that was up to a quarter of an inch, six millimetres deep with body filler. And it was held together with nothing more than body filler. This um, grill support panel is screwed in place from inside. I'll show you that. See if we can get you a better view of how it's all secured. So this is down behind it, and we've got holes down here. Trying not to block my own torchlight. There is a bit of a patch has been, I can't quite say welded on, because it looks more like a pigeon crapped on it. But there's a snotty plate being patched in there, but it's not really doing anything significant. Here's one of the screws that hold the lower valance in place. That just seems to be held in place with those. There's a self-tapper there. And there's one here. This end's pretty crusty as well. Right. So I've got an air-powered hacksaw. So let's see how that goes. A little bit noisy, especially when the compressor cuts in. Right, so that's the grill support panel off. Pretty crusty along that bottom edge. Um, there's three possible solutions to that. One is a new panel, which would mean joining the A43 in our owner's club, which I, I'm not in any hurry to do, to be honest. Um, not for any other reason than I'm just not that big on being in clubs. 
I can cut in a new flange along that bottom edge, which I think is probably the, well, I thought was probably the way forward until I just spotted there's, there's still about a quarter of an inch of filler on that middle piece. So it might need a bit of work yet. And the third option is to make a new one completely. So we shall have to see how we go on that. But now I can see the apron panel, I believe it's called, which is pretty much like a pair of lacy knickers. And uh, it would appear that a fair bit of this car for a good few years has been held together with some silicon rubber which is a bit disturbing but hey ho right we'll get those two screws out and then we should be able to get the valance off and see what we're up against that's one panel in good condition yeah that front cross member has been remade um, the welding actually isn't bad I suspect whoever did this rebuild 11 years ago 12 years ago employed somebody else to do that welding because that's not too terrible so what we need to do is get this all cleaned up and then we can see what we've got to do to repair it but I do wish that if if you're doing a restoration of a car if you're doing some repair work if you've got some welding to do if you can't weld pay somebody else to do it don't bodge it and then hide it with snot because it's not structural it's not good, it's not pretty, and it sure as hell ain't fucking clever. I think, all things being equal, it would be a good idea to take the radiator out at this point to save the risk of damaging it. And it also means I've got unhindered access to the rear of these areas. So we'll lower her down a bit and we'll lower her down a bit. Take the radiator out. we have the radiator out of the way. Get that. Pop that somewhere safe. Annoyingly, they've, they've welded all the way along there from underneath to the cross member, but this is just oh. 
I really don't know what to say anymore. So, there we have it. I don't think there's a lot more I can do on that right now. Hello again. Right, things have changed a little bit um, since I started this video, which wasn't yesterday, wasn't even last week. It was sometime last month, so several weeks have gone by. Um, so, a few changes, the haircut's different, I've not got the jumper on. So, apologies for the lack of continuity. Right, in the meantime, I have been getting on with some work on Morty, a bit of a piecemeal fashion, which is why none of it's been recorded. I'll swing the camera around and show you what we're at. Right, so as you can see, I've removed most of the apron panel, um, taking it off in pieces, just because it's fully welded along there, so that's got to be ground out. I've drilled through the spot welds, I've cut the worst of the front edge off it. I've taken a template from it to make a new one, which is here, and you can see the black line there. That's my pattern for the front edge, and that will go in like so. Once I've got the old panel off, that'll go in, and that can be spot welded. I'll have to fold down the flanges here and here, and add a triangular piece in at each end to close those up. Cut the shape along the front, and then I can fold down the flange, and we're good to go. So, without further ado and nonsense, we'll get stuck into it. Right, so, because I'm going to be doing some grinding uh, to cut this old panel out, so I've got the good pulling gear on, mask and the leather jacket, there's going to be a lot of grinding dust and sparks and it's unpleasant, it's not good for you, so protect yourself. Right, let's get to it. It's going to be noisy. Right, that's got rid of the old apron, cut it right back, uh, mixture of grinders, um, everything from the little air grinder, all the way up to this bad old girl, 3000 watts, kicks like a beast, but cuts through anything. So we've got rid of the old apron, clean it up with the grinder as best I can. Whoever built this car in 2011, they've actually put a piece of box section in there and then welded a skin over the top of it. So that is actually quite strong, or it will be once it's fully welded. So I just need to straighten this up, get rid of some of the rust, and then we can see about fitting up the new panel. So to level that up, I just Right, that's got that straightened up a bit. It hasn't straightened up very well there because there's a MIG welded seam along the back of that and the, the weld is too thick to fold. And then we'll uh, get rid of as much of the rust as we can. I'll have a mask on. Right, that's got rid of the worst of the rust. There's a few high spots that just need tapping down. clean up and then we can offer the new panel in. Right, let's have a look how this new panel fits. That's 
quite nice. That's nice. So what I can do is punch through and spot weld along there and then I can fold that flange back over. That needs to be a more upright. And I can weld along the bottom edge there. These, I've got a triangular piece missing there and there. So a little bit more trimming of some junk in the corners. And then I can fold this flange down flat from there and make up a little triangular patch to go in each side of that. And then we're pretty good. Uh, get that up to there and there. But first I think we need to cut the shape onto the front end. So So I'm going to start here. I'm going to cut about two to three millimeters outside of my line. Um, that just gives me enough metal to fold down to make the flange. One side done. Let me come around to the other side. Nice one. So now if I offer that back in to position. mark there and there that's where that flange needs cutting back to folding down flat so I think the best is going to be to snip that and there and then fold that flange down flat and then we can trim it to suit and then I can make the patch panels to go in there and there uh, I'm in two minds about when to put the flange on the end, edge of this, whether to do it now or once it's welded in. I'm thinking once it's welded in might be the better option because this panel will be held quite firmly and rigidly then and then it's just a question of just gradually working along folding that flange down. Probably need to just make some snips in the corners because obviously they're going to close in. So. Is that one? Is that one? Now I need something with some 
solidity about it to knock that flange down onto. So a nice big hefty lump of box section there. I think it's, it's about five mil wall thickness, so it's pretty hefty gauge. But now I can And the secret for doing a job like this is not to try and knock it all down flat in one go. And flip him over and I should be able to hammer the worst of that crease out. need trimming back because that edge that upstand there is right at the uh, edge of the flange Trim that little triangle out, and the same with this one. There we go. That's nice. I'm liking this. Right, my apologies to you. Camera battery ran out. I've got a bit of charge back in it just to finish this video now. Um, so I'll show you what I've done. So that's the new apron panel. Get that clamped in. And you'll possibly be able to see that I've punched a series of holes in the flange for spot welding it in. And then I've made two patch panels to go in there. And there, if I can get them to stay in place. So they will be again the flange is punched so that I can spot weld it to the face panel and then I can stitch that to the apron panel along the front edge of it. Same this side. And then once that's done, we can weld along the bottom edge, get that all nice and strong and secure, and then I can fold the flange down at the front and get that up to there and weld it up to there, and likewise this side. So, yeah, um, I think that's about it for this video. As I say, my apologies for battery problems and a bit of a disjointed video and an incomplete conclusion as yet but in the next video I'll be welding this in get this all welded up um, and then the next one after that the next one after that will be to make a new one of these now that's going to be quite challenging because I've got to make a longish thinnish panel with two flanges top and bottom. It's not square, it's, it sits like that. 
so that face actually angles forward slightly. I ummed and ahmed whether to cut that along its length and make a new flange and weld it in, but I don't think that would work. I think the distortion would be terrible. And there is probably half a pound of filler on this panel that's got to be cleared off before I can do any welding to it. So I've come to the conclusion it will be better to make a new one. Um, so I should be trying out some new techniques, new to me, not new to the industry. Plenty of people who do this kind of stuff on a regular basis use this kind of equipment. But I bought a shrinker stretcher, which I'll show you in the next video. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting, possibly informative, maybe not. I don't know. If you're doing a similar job, this is the kind of stuff you've got to deal with. Um, as I've said in previous videos, this isn't a concourse restoration. It's a repair to make a functional motorsport vehicle that is hopefully safe. We shall see. Hopefully I never have to test out any of the strength characteristics of this car. Um, but that's it. Yeah. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.